Stand up, all, all, everybody, everybody stand up, come on, come on, come on, I command. Okay, so I'm going to separate people in two groups. First, the people that, well, like most people, chose your careers, with what, what to measure in, which university to go. If you decide it, nobody else decides for you, you can sit down. It's, if destiny or somebody else decided for you, you can remain seated. Okay, as I suppose, the majority, the big majority the, the, the of people have decided by yourself, right? Uh, for me, it was a little bit different. I am the son of two poets. Um, my mother was a poet. My father was a poet. And I write poetry. So I was inclined, naturally, to go to something humanistic, to something like uh, psychology or literature or philosophy. But in Argentina, back then, there was a military dictatorship. And our dictator considered that people like philosophers, or psychologists, dangerous people. Well, he had a point because, you know, philosophers think our dictator didn't. <laughs> the thing is that I tried to go to philosophy, and uh, when I went there, I was asked for a special ID that I didn't have. And I was asked to go to the police department to get it. So I went there. As you may imagine, there was a long queue. And then I, when I finally was at the top of it, uh, there was this lady who had a friendly face, like, what do you want? In retrospect, I think that she had eaten the night before something like poisoned or uh, rotten or radioactive or the three things at once and she was having trouble digesting it. <laughs> so I explained, well, I need this special thing for... Uh, I said, well, no, well, there's no way, we're going to try weeks, or, oh, I need an hour. She said she was sorry, but I couldn't get it. I was kind of, you know... But I insisted, I went back and tried to get into literature. The last day of admissions. Here's a tip. Don't go the last days of admissions. Uh, it turned out that I arrived one minute late. One minute late. And I arrived with this kind gentleman who explained to me the value of 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he, he was not from Argentina. I think he was from Germany or from Swiss because he was really respectful of timetables. I was there, so I, I tried. I looked around for departments where admission was still open. And it turned out that the computer science department was open. So, can you imagine? I didn't know anything about computers at that time. And I'm a poet, so what the poet is doing there? Well, fast forward to the 22nd of February last year, I sold my software company. It was a multi-million dollar business, uh, we had hundreds of employees around the world. We sold products to the uh, largest corporations in the world in more than 50 countries. How come? Because uh, I was a poet. I was not supposed to be in the software business. I never received formal training as 
an entrepreneur. I'm not the top entrepreneur, I'm not the top marketer, I'm not the top salesman, I'm not the top communicator, I'm not the top technician. I don't even speak English. <laughs> I speak Argentinian English, which is a kind of Italian. <laughs> if you do this, you speak Italian, no matter what you say, right? So, how come, how come, <laughs> that with my ordinary talent, I was so successful? And I think that I discovered something very interesting in the process that I really want to share with you today. I think the fact that I was a poet in computer science was really a factor for my success. Because I added sensitivity, I added uh, empathy, I added uh, writing skills, and other things, well, a sense of humor, yeah, you could say, uh, to a uh, field that normally doesn't have it. And this is what I consider the, uh, the cocktail effect or the hidden secret of success. Because we all know about these things, about focus, hard work, find your passion, things like that. Uh, pretty well, but I think that there's something missing. Contrary to popular belief, you don't need to be an expert or number one in your profession. And you don't need an extraordinary talent to be successful. And it's very important. But people try, there's a lot of frustration trying to be number one in your profession. But what you need it's a mix, a cocktail, mixing your elements, your ordinary talents. And if you look closely, you will find that most successful people are like this. Not very extraordinary at something, but not bad at many things. Take our best sales rep. Our best sales rep was not our best sales rep. His selling techniques, his knowledge of complex software products, <laughs> his knowledge of music and movies, <laughs> he sold more than anyone at the company. He connected with customers just by using music and movies. He sold millions of dollars worth of software products he doesn't quite understand. <laughs> Ordinary talent produce extraordinary results. The best chef in the world is not the best chef in the world. Ferran Adria has been considered the best chef, but he's not a traditional chef. He created something called molecular cuisine, which basically is chemistry. He used ingredients like chelin agents, liquid nitrogen, and other things that you may don't, you, you don't want to know. What did you put in my food? <laughs> but he's not a Nobel Prize in chemistry. He's not even a chemist. These are my drawings, by the way. I hope you like them. <coughs> I like the pig. The, the pig looks like a little bit Italian. <laughs> what are you doing, Ferran? <laughs> so uh, that's something very interesting about Ferran Adria, which is the distance between ingredients. Food and Chemistry, very interesting. I mean, if you have a, a cocktail of Coca-Cola and Pepsi, it's not interesting, right? But selling software and music and movies, then you have something interesting. Uh, for Steve Jobs, it was technology and aesthetics, a sense of beauty. It's very interesting. The largest the distance between the ingredients on your mix, the better. How do you know the ingredients of your mix? Well, here's an exercise for you. 
You have to write down 10, 20, 30 things where you think you're good at. If you think you're good at, you write it on the list. Okay? If you are terrible at something, don't put it on the list. <laughs> and then, and here's the interesting part, ask three coworkers, three family members, not your mother, three family members, and uh, three friends to add to your list. And you'll discover things that you don't know about you. And if they say you are good at something, don't argue with them. You are good at some, at, at whatever they put in there. Imagine, this is really, really powerful. I was in, um, in a speaking trip um, last year uh, in North and South America, and I, after my session in Ecuador, there was this guy who, who approached me and told me that, hey, my friends, uh, my friends always told me, oh, you're such a great storyteller. Oh, we love it when you tell us stories. And he didn't know that, but he listened. And so he created this blog, and in just three months, he had more than 15,000 followers. All right, this is your homework, as I said, so you have to do this and collect as many ingredients as you, as you can. What happened, and this is really, really interesting, what happened if you don't feel passion for any standard profession? Create your own. Invent one. Make it a mix, a cocktail of the things that inspire you. This is my favorite example. It was this lady who thought he couldn't make money out of dancing. She loves dancing, but she was not extraordinarily talented, right? But she also loved to travel, and she loved to uh, speak foreign languages. So she created this specialty agency, travel agency, where you can go to a foreign country and learn typical dances and the language at the same time. It was a success. And she's happy with that. And that's, that's the important thing, because happiness is the ultimate success. The last thing would be, remember to put soft skills in your mix. Soft skills are human skills. They are more important than technical skills. Really. Much more. Take Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is the second richest guy on the planet. And he says, if it weren't because of my learning of soft skills, I wouldn't be Warren Buffett. And there's a saying from a doctor in, in Argentina, Ramon Carrillo, who said that uh, you can be a better doctor than you are a human being. And I really believe that. You can't be a better professional than you are a human being. I hope you remember this. Ordinary talent, extraordinary results. Repeat with me. <laughs> Ordinary talent, extraordinary results. Yeah, it's such a good audience. I love you. Uh, who am I? I am a poet who got lost on his way to college. And it was wonderful for my mix. And now that I am, I sold my company, I look forward for my next mix. I learned that you don't need any extraordinary talent to be extraordinary. I learned that if you connect with yourself, you will connect with others. You will be you. It is, it is frustrating the effort some people put to be another person. The more of you on your mix, the more you you are. The more you you are, the more unique, the more extraordinary, the happier you are. 
please don't discard anything, because talent is a terrible thing to waste. You, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you all are a unique solution to problems. That's why you are on this planet. So who are you? How are you going to be extraordinary? What's, what's on your mix? A poet said this much more beautifully. He said, if you were truly you, who would you be? Thank you. Thank you. Have a great life. Thank you.